Hello and welcome to my review of The Best of Robert Heinlein, 1947 to 1959. This is a collection of short stories from the Dean of Science Fiction, edited by Angus Wells with an introduction by Peter R. Weston and an up-to-date in 1973 bibliography by Gerald Bishop. But I am not going to start this review with any complaints about shady publishers, jobs for the boys or money for old rope. Instead, I'll just say that if you're new here and interested in Heinlein, there's a lot of relevant content on this channel, and some of it you might actually like. I wrote my dissertation on Heinlein, that's here, and while I was preparing that, I read nothing but Heinlein for about two, three years. I went a little strange. And to set you for four. So the four short stories contained in this volume are The Green Hills of Earth, The Long Watch, The Man Who Sold the Moon, and fan favourite, All You Zombies. The stories were released in that order, and most of them are part of the famous Future History series. The first story is 1947's The Green Hills of Earth, and it tells the story of wrestling. It even begins with the words, this is the story of wrestling, and it's absolutely peak Heinlein, beautifully establishing that wrestling is the singer of songs known across the galaxy, and fans of Heinlein will know about his fondness for redheads and get a little kick out of a song named That Red-Haired Venusberg Gal. But wrestling's anthem, The Green Hills of Earth, is known across the galaxy as something of a hymn for spacers. I pray for one last landing on the globe that gave me birth. Let me rest my eyes on the fleecy skies and the cool green hills of Earth. Heinlein, ever the engineer and the pragmatist, can turn his hand to some decent poetry when he wants as well, and some of the lyrics related in the course of the story have been turned into songs over the years. Rissling was formerly an engineer himself and lost his sight, saving his ship. Since then, he's been something of a wandering troubadour, earning a living from his singing, with little regard for the real commercial potential of his work. There's a romance to that naivety that really hits home if you share Heinlein's passion for space and exploration. Rissling just wanted to experience space, even when he could no longer see it. Yet, as he gets older, Rissling is drawn home by the words of his most popular work. He longs for home and jump ship. And in typical Heinlein style, he does it by badgering, outwitting, and cajoling a reluctant ship's captain into giving him that passage. That ship, though, also gets in trouble, and the blind ex-engineer gives his life to save it while singing his last works into the ship's recorder. The writer of the galaxy's greatest ode to home never making it back there himself. 12 pages long, the story has more pathos than 99% of novels that are 20 times that length. The Green Hills of Earth is an outstanding short story and would be worth the three English pounds I paid for this book on its own. The second story is The Long Watch, a 1950 short that was first published in one of those Shastra collections that caused Heinlein a string of headaches and those extra stories were used to tie together some of the loose threads of the future history series as Heinlein began to lose interest in it. The Long Watch begins with a great hook, a prologue in the style of a significant historical text. A drone ship carrying a radioactive coffin heads towards Earth with a guard of honour. From there, it skips back and relates the story of John Ezra Darquest, familiar to Heinlein fans as one of the four heroes of the Watch from 1949 Space Cadet. Darquest is a missile technician working on the moon base when his superiors try to get him on side while they stage their coup, feeling that the politicians of Earth are too stupid and self-serving to be trusted with their nuclear arsenals. The military, they argue, are the only ones who can be trusted with such great power. Dahlquist stalls for time and then locks himself into the arsenal and breaks the warheads of the missiles, receiving a lethal radiation dose in the process. In terms of theme, the first two stories of this collection are quite similar. Both expertly tell the tale of a man killed doing the right thing, standing by his principles, the classic embodiment of Heinleinian heroism. The next story, also from 1950, also for Shasta, is about a very different kind of heroism. In The Man Who Sold the Moon, Dee Dee Harriman is a corporate bigwig and entrepreneur with his heart set on travelling to the moon. Harriman, at times, spouts Heinlein's own philosophy with gusto. Space travel, he says, should be a private enterprise and business is no business of governments. He also believes that women rule the world because they are the inspiration for everything that men do. He also believes that Everything lawyers do is basically a crime. A little moral grandstanding that's value is slightly undercut when Harriman swindles the Philatelic Society and nickel and dimes high schoolers to fund his venture. 
However, those moral slips contrasted with the earlier commentary shows how desperate Harriman is to fulfil his dream. His passion drives the story, which at 130 pages is more of a novella and is easily the longest in this collection. But at its core, the story is about a man moving from boardroom to boardroom and bullying the country's elite out of their cash. It could have the potential to be staggeringly dull, but rarely slips below thoroughly entertaining as Harriman reveals scheme after scheme after scheme. The high point comes when Harriman enters the Coke Wars, persuading Mocha-Cola they should pay him the same amount as their rivals have offered, not to sponsor the moon rather, but just to not let the rivals do it. It's smart and it's funny and the kick in the novel's finale is that Harriman has to forego his place on the moon trip so that the trip can take place at all. Once again the man has to sacrifice for the greater good, though not in this instance his life. However, that the corporation he created then forces him to give up his dream of travelling indefinitely because only he can make space travel profitable. It touches on a thing that owning a corporation is a myth and that ultimately it owns you. That will be further explored in Citizen of the Galaxy seven years later. The Man Who Sold the Moon is a fine novella. That it might be the weakest story present in this collection only speaks of the sheer quality of the others. One of the best parts of this collection is that in the introduction, Weston considers the story an example of Heinlein getting it completely wrong. That corporate interests cannot explore space. Today, we know that space is too big for that sort of thing, and we know that moon rockets need the resources of a rich nation. Weston spends half a page explaining the literary value of this obsolete science fiction, offering apologia along the lines of, it's the most realistic that could be done at the time. Yes, it's certainly amazing that anyone could be that wrong. And on the subject of pure literary value, Heinlein shows where he stands. There's a news reporter watching the launch and waxing lyrically on the emotional power of that moment. The great pioneer climbing like an angel of the Lord, flaming sword in hand, is even now on her glorious way to our sister planet. Harriman snaps at a flunky to turn that off because there's engineering to be done. It's a perfect timeline moment. Passion is required for poetry, but poetry is not required for passion. And it's difficult not to be slept along with Harriman's, even through the morally murky moments. And that level of subtlety is all too rare in science fiction. Last but not least, we have fan favourite All You Zombies, one of the very last short stories that Heinlein wrote. To my knowledge, there is only one late short, Searchlight, which was written for an advert. All You Zombies, by contrast, was written for Playboy, but rejected after the editor said the sex in it made them feel queasy. Instead, it appeared in 1959 in the pages of Fantasy and Science Fiction magazine. All You Zombies is short, 12 pages in this volume, and in that short space, a man tells a bartender about how he was once a woman, revealed to be a hermaphrodite during a difficult childbirth, and then transitioned to a man. The man is taken back in time to get revenge on the man who impregnated him. He then learns he was that man himself, and that the man who takes him back in time is, in fact, his future self, who then recruits him to the temporal court. This Closed loop is an aerobarous and quite a staple in science fiction these days. The sexual morality is certainly questionable. The comedy content of the various acronyms used throughout is not. Only Highline at his most economical could write this, make it seem so real, not disgusting, and thoroughly entertaining in 12 pages. And only Highline would draw parallels between himself and the protagonist. I write him, they print him, I eat, and end with a powerful slipsy statement like he does. This story, though, has a note of cynicism beneath it all. A tired Heinlein, still creating as well as he ever did, but there's a hint of age or defeat creeping in, something completely at odds with the chest-thumping politicising of 1959's other offering, Starship Troopers. In conclusion, although the introduction mentions other stories not actually included in this collection, if you acquire a copy of it, you will not feel shortchanged. This is Heinlein, the entertainer at the top of his game, creating characters and adventures for them to take part in. Oddly, even when paid by the word, Heinlein uses them economically yet still extracts genuine pathos from his creations. It's impossible not to be moved by the two men who lay down their lives in this novel to stand up for their beliefs and what they feel is the right thing to do. Harriman's ethics are looser, his goal more personal, but his passion is hard to resist nonetheless, even when he slams the door shut on the poet, trying to put that passion into words. This collection is just about the perfect introduction to Heinlein for newbies. It contains four short stories, all extraordinary for different reasons. Highly recommended to all science fiction fans out there. Thank you for watching. Usually on this channel, I'm pretty grumpy, and I'm sure that next week, normal service will be resumed. Liking and subbing is the way to know for sure.